Philip Ventimiglia is product manager infotainment here at Bosch. Philip, can you tell us about Bosch's announcements here at CES 2016 and what you've been showing? Actually, Bosch has been showing quite a bit. And as you can see by the booth and the booth traffic we're receiving, we have a lot of interesting things on display. Mm -hmm. Probably the most popular thing that we've had is our haptic touchscreen. Right. The haptic touchscreen actually recreates the physical sensation of touching a button, but on a basically a touch surface, a glass surface. So this is Bosch's haptic touch display. And what we're doing here is recreating the physical experience of actually touching a button. Okay. So if you touch the screen and run around, you'll feel different textures for different buttons. That's spooky, you really can. Yeah. There's ridges. And yes, the ridges. Yeah. And press the button down and it should feel like you're pressing a real button on the display. It certainly does. And we can create different types of sensations. We can have different types of buttons. And the ultimate goal for us is to be able to have the driver feel around on the screen for the button they're looking for, actuate it, but never take their eyes off the road, keeping That's them safe amazing. the entire way but still giving the OEMs the flexibility that a touch spring brings. Okay, so these two buttons here, what are we doing? Here? So this is a latch button, yep. so you feel it pop down and pop up as you depress it. You really almost can feel it. You can feel movement. it feels yeah. like it pops up even yeah. though it's a flat surface. Yeah. And this button here would be like a hazard indicator. Mm -hmm. Gives you kind of a warning sensation to make sure you know that you're depressing it. Wow, it vibrates. That's yes, amazing. it vibrates. And we can completely configure the amount of pressure, the texture required on the screen. So here we'll have a very low amount of pressure to actuate the button, yeah. but I'll increase the pressure and it should require much more force. Wow, I really have to push you that really quite have strongly. To push it. Yeah, you really absolutely. have to push it. So can this surface be glass, is it plastic or what? The, the, the mechanism we're using is independent of the display technology and it can be different types of touch, capacitive, resistive, whatever it happens to be. And it's independent of the display size as well. So Bosch is really looking to support OEMs uh, and bringing this into automotive in the next few years. That's pretty clever. It's very clever and what we're trying to achieve with it is hopefully we can get to the point where you can find a button on the screen, touch it, and never actually have to look at the screen so we keep your eyes on the road the entire time. Well, I saw that this had been announced. Uh, are you showing it working here? And how yes. far from being a reality is this? I, I think it's actually pretty close to reality. We've seen um, a lot of OEMs come by the booth and, mm -hmm. and check it out. And just from the crowds that we see every time we, we uh, show it off today, everybody enjoys the experience. So I, I would expect within the next couple of years we would see it in automobiles. Okay, Philip, we're now looking at MySpin. What's the latest uh, announcement as far as yep. that's concerned? So this MySpin is Bosch's smartphone integration solution. Yep. So it allows you to use the apps on your phone, but safely in your car. Okay. And we've increased the number of apps available to nearly 50, uh, 50 globally around the world. And we have many different apps and types available, navigation apps, audio apps, and the system overall has very, very good response. So as you can see here with the navigation app, I have a full 3D navigation map, but I can move around the entire screen in a very fast way, even though all of this content you're seeing is actually being delivered by your smartphone. Okay. Right. And beyond this, Bosch is looking to uh, work with future app partners to bring in more apps into the ecosystem and make it available to OEMs. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. How do you handle app selection? Is it? Mm -hmm. I guess you integrate quite closely with the app developers. Does Bosch perhaps pro, uh, provide an API or something? That yeah, so actually Bosch has an SDK that we provide to app developers. Okay. They integrate it into the normal app that's in the Apple App Store or the Google, uh, Google Store. And then you can download it directly to your system. When we work with an OEM, we provide a launcher application that allows app discovery for the OEM, which applications they've whitelisted and what applications they want to be able to show on their screen. And with that launcher application, the user can then find as many applications as possible to show on their screen and download them directly to their phone. And are you completely open as to what type of apps will go on here? Obviously, most are going to be automotive related in the early days and infotainment, but do you have an open mind? Uh, definitely an open mind, but we also uh, have safety in mind as well. Right. We don't want any application to show up on the screen that might distract the driver. So we do have uh, several criteria that the app developers have to meet before we allow them into the ecosystem and into any car. And without naming names, I believe that this has already been adopted by a number of the uh, major manufacturers. Yes, there's, there's uh, one OEM that has definitely uh, already launched this, 2015 model uh, vehicles as well as 2016 model vehicles, and we should see it coming to more OEMs in the future. Okay, and what else are we seeing here? So behind us we have uh, our automated vehicle uh, experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Bosch is not just developing the sensors for automated vehicle technology. Once you actually have automated vehicles, you need a whole new experience in the car. Obviously, there's a lot of downtime as well. Yes. You don't want to be bored while the car is just driving down the road. No. So 
Bosch is able to connect to your smart home, connect to your wearable devices, and connect to the rest of your life and allow you to do uh, many more things while you're driving down the road than just sit and look out the window. We need to be sure uh, that the automated vehicle is very clear when it's in automated mode. Bosch has developed a solution where the driver hangs onto the steering wheel for a certain amount of time and then hands off control to the vehicle. And the driver is definitely aware that the vehicle is in control. The same, same process is used to give control back into manual mode. Another technology that Bosch is showing off here is that we feel that in an automated vehicle, maybe we can show visually to other vehicles that it's in an automated mode. So you'll see the car can represent itself with many different colors. And maybe the car is in automated mode and it shows a color green to other drivers around. And that way, you know that you're interacting with an automated vehicle on the road and you can take appropriate measures. So Bosch has uh, deep integration in this part of the industry, but I'm sure Bosch realizes, like every other company, that it's not just a case of developing the technology. Exactly. There are many other factors that need to be brought into play. Exactly. How long do we really think it's going to be until the automated, fully automated cars are on the road? It's definitely going to be stepwise. Yeah. So we will see the first steps, what we call semi-autonomous driving, where maybe the vehicle takes control in very specific situations, perhaps uh, the highway. But probably further out, we do feel that at some point in time, we will have fully door-to-door -door autonomous driving. All of the automotive OEMs are kind of in a race at the moment to bring in as much autonomous driving capability as possible. And are players other than the automotive companies getting involved with this? Obviously, we have the, the major tech companies who have an interest too. Tech companies have an interest. All of the automotive tier ones have a big interest to support the OEMs in bringing this technology to market as soon as possible. With the addition of new players like Google and Tesla, yep. it's uh, making the race very interesting for everybody. So I think overall we'll see it maybe sooner than later, but maybe the legislation and the other issues will still have to be worked out in time.